Today I'm going to show you one of my favorite problems in perfect competition. This is a long-run equilibrium problem that you may encounter. Some preliminaries. In perfect competition, long-run equilibrium is characterized by zero economic profit. This just means that firms are making a normal rate of return. Zero economic profit occurs when the price of the firm's output equals the average cost of production. When price equals average cost, the firm is making just zero economic profit. It might be selling a unit for $10, but on average it costs the firm $10 to make. In that case, the firm's not going to be making any economic profit. In long-run equilibrium, the condition is given by the following. The price of the firm's product equals marginal cost equals average cost. And the firm is producing where average cost is minimized. As we're going to see, this, can, this is one of the keys for long-run equilibrium. So the key to long-run equilibrium problems is to find the output where average cost is minimized. This value will allow us to solve for the long-run equilibrium price. Here's the setup for our problem. Suppose there are numerous firms in a perfectly competitive market, each with a total cost curve given by the following equation. TC equals 18, and 18 just rep represents fixed cost plus 0.5q squared. Lowercase q represents the individual firm's output. This market has a demand curve given by capital Q equals 606 minus P, where Q is the quantity demanded in the market by all consumers, and P is the price per unit. Here are some questions we'll be able to answer. How much output does each firm produce in the long run? What's the long run equilibrium price? How many units of output do consumers buy in the long run? How many firms serve the market in the long run? So let me go ahead and go through that then. So as I stated on the previous slide, the demand curve in this market is given by Q equals 606 minus P and each firm has a total cost equation given by the following. Let me maybe do a little diagram here to help motivate this some more. So we got dollars and the firm's output. What we're looking for in long run equilibrium in solving these problems, we want to get the average cost equation. Okay? We want to find where it's minimized at the bottom here of this U. We want to find that output level, plug that output level back into the average cost equation oops, to get the long run equilibrium price. This P star here is going to be the long run equilibrium price. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. First thing we need to get is average cost. So I'm going to abbreviate average cost AC. Some books may call it average total cost ATC. It's the same concept. All we're going to do to derive average cost is take the total cost equation and divide through by Q. No, just Q. So we get 18 divided by Q plus 0.5 Q. Okay, Q squared divided by Q just leaves us Q. Let me get rid of that so no one gets confused. Okay. All right, so that's our average cost equation. We want to find where this average cost equation is minimized. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of average cost with respect to output. Okay. This is really nothing more than the slope of the average cost curve. The derivative is a slope concept. So this is the slope of the average cost curve. And what we're interested in is finding where the slope is zero, and that's going to be at the bottom right here. Okay? The only place where the slope is zero is going to be at the bottom of the average cost equation. So taking our derivative, we're going to get uh, minus 18 divided by Q squared plus 0.5. OK, 
okay? So this equation is the slope of the average cost curve. What we're interested in is finding where the slope equals zero. So I'm going to set this result, this derivative result equal to zero, and we're going to solve for Q now. So we're going to get point five times Q squared equals eighteen. Okay, just moving point five over to the right hand side, uh, then multiplying through by Q squared. Uh, you'll notice that the minuses are going to cancel, so they're both gone. And now just simplifying this a little bit more. We get 36. Okay, so we need to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square term, and we find that Q equals 6. So we found that value right there. At 6 units of output, this firm is producing output at the lowest possible uh, uh, unit cost. There is no other output level that would be associated with a lower per unit cost. So that's one of the questions we are trying to answer. The next thing we want to find is the long run equilibrium price. So the long run equilibrium price, let me just abbreviate, is just going to be as follows. We're going to evaluate the average cost equation at six units of output. And we get six dollars. Okay, it just so happens that the quantity and the price are equal here, but that's just uh, by accident. So average cost um, at six units of output is six dollars, and that's the long run equilibrium price, six dollars. So that was w one of the other questions that we're trying to answer in this. Okay, um, let me put on a clean slide. All right, uh, what else do we need? Let's find out how many units consumers buy in this market. Given the market demand curve of 606 minus P, and since P is $6, we see that consumers are going to buy 600 units of output. The next question we wanted to answer is how many firms serve the market? Okay, well, this isn't too bad to figure out. Remember that each firm produces six units of output from our previous slide, just where average cost is minimized. So if the total output in the market is 600, that must mean we have 100 firms serving the market. We have 100 firms in the market, each producing six units of output. We're getting our 600 units of output in this market. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.